Very elegant uh, music, I think. So we're going to stay in that same time frame, uh, still in Spain. This is a contemporary of Narvaez. This composer's name is Alonso de Mudara. And this particular manuscript uh, is dated 1541 in Spain. So I'm playing two pieces by Mudara. The first is entitled Romanesca, which was based on a very popular a uh, folk melody of the period that a lot of composers were using as a theme for their compositions. And then the second piece is a small little dance, a uh, galliard, galliarda in Spanish, also by Mudara, two pieces by Mudara.
Okay, now we're going across the, the water to England. And we're gonna, here are two pieces. I've been putting these in pairs. Uh, two pieces for the lute originally. A uh, very famous uh, lute, lutenist and composer of the period, John Dowland. Very prolific uh, composer, wrote not just solo lute music, but all sorts of ensembles. Uh, I think he worked for the, for, the, for the king and queen and was working in all the uh, courts and playing, writing music for, for their special occasions and things like that. These are two uh, dances. The first one, uh, similar to the last Spanish piece you heard, a Gallarda, Galliard. It's called Melancholy Galliard. And the second piece, he often gives very, very funny titles to, uh, often humorous titles to his, to his uh, pieces. But this one, the second one is entitled Lady Hunston's Puff, P-U-F-F-E. I don't know what that refers to, but anyway. He also uh, was a teacher and, and uh, uh, taught a lot of the, the, the ladies of the period uh, lute and music. So a galliard and another dance, Lady Hudson's Puff by John Dowland. <laughs>
So now we're going to go to Germany, to the Baroque period, 1600s to mid 1700s. And I didn't want to leave this composer out because he's one of my favorite composers, uh, Johann Sebastian Bach. So I'm going to play two pieces by Bach. Uh, these were originally, the first one was from a lute suite that he wrote. He wrote four of the four lute suites. And this is a, a Sarbond, a very introspective, quiet kind of piece. And I'm following that with uh, two dances, uh, two gavats by, uh, by Bach that were originally written for the cello. So uh, one piece by Bach for the lute, and then a set of pieces that are actually together, written as a, as a pair. Uh, actually, the first one's the first, uh, there are two gavats, and we play the first one, followed by the second one, and we return to play the first one. So it goes first gavat, second gavat, back to first gavat. So the first one is written for relative of the guitar, the lute, and the second one is, you know, a bowed instrument for cello. Yes? Can you tell us what is a gavat? A gavat, well, it's a dance, a dance form. One of the many dances that the Baroque period composers, there are hundreds of gavats, hundreds of jigs, hundreds of borets. It's just a specific dance that has a particular uh, tempo, just uh, medium fast tempo, and they were danced in the earlier times, they were danced to. But this is more of just an in instrumental uh, that's written with the, with the form of gav the gavat in mind, not to be danced to but has the characteristics of a gavotte dance. Does, it, does that help you? Yeah. Okay, good. And actually, the first one, the first piece by Bach is called Sarabande. It's also a dance form, a uh, slower dance form, Sarabande. So a Sarabande and two gavots.
So I'm going to what's called the classical period now, uh, the next century. I'm going to play a minuet, which again is, is another dance. Uh, and this is um, by Franz Joseph Haydn, whose uh, life dates were 1732 to 1809. And uh, Mozart used to call him Papa Haydn. Uh, he's predecessor to Mozart. but. Mozart learned a lot from Haydn and respected him a lot too. He just took, Mozart just took what Haydn established uh, in the compositional field and just, you know, took it to higher, higher, higher realms. But this is a little minuet uh, from a, court, a string quartet that Haydn wrote.
going to skip forward and uh, in my music here and uh, play uh, what might be the main entree of tonight. Uh, <laughs> so this is a piece uh, a little bit later. Spanish composer Fernando Sor, whose days were, were 1778, 1839. And Sor was a great uh, virtuoso guitarist of that time period. Wrote a lot of pieces for us, uh, for the guitar world. Uh, this is the grand solo of one of his grand solo uh, pieces. Uh, the first version of this that I'm, I'm going to play, he, he revised it a couple of times, but this is the very first version, which I think is maybe the most interesting. But it was uh, done in 1822, so 200 years ago, right? You know, if you put two people that are 100 years old together, it's not that far away, right? <laughs> right? And you look at it that way. <laughs> concert was, uh, what I'm presenting tonight, was put together in a very quick way because I was told, you know, Fred wasn't able to do the concert, so I just uh, got my suitcase uh, binder here, <laughs> so to speak, and put some music in it. So I hope you'll like this piece. I enjoy playing it. I'm just going to jump in and, and play it for you. It's made up of an introduction, a slow move, a slow section, uh, followed by uh, an allegro, more quick up tempo piece, and it goes through a multitude of of uh, development. It's like a mini mini uh, mini symphony movement for the guitar in a way.
Thank mm-hmm. you.
can't see the clock. Is it like 8.30? What time is it? Say? Okay. I'm going to do two more pieces because we have to be out here by nine. So two more pieces uh, going to the to the 20th century. The first piece, uh, a composer from Brazil. Prolific, another one of these prolific uh, composers who wrote for all sorts of instruments, but for the guitar, he's known for having written uh, a set of 12 etudes, concert etudes, a guitar concerto, uh, a set of preludes, and uh, another set called a Sweet Bra a Bra Brazilian Suite. And uh, his name is Heitor Villalobos. This is one of his preludes. Prelude number two.
So, my last piece. Thank you very much for coming. Appreciate it. Sorry about the long delay in the beginning. Uh, anyway, I could have played more, but anyway. uh, next time. November, a uh, bit of this November, the last Sunday in November, uh, Fred and I are supposed to get together uh, and play a duo concert together. It's uh, music from uh, Europe and, the La and Latin America. And then uh, December, I forget it's the 8th or 10th, whatever the 8th or 10th, if it's a Saturday, whatever the number is, uh, around 8 or 10, um, I'm playing another solo concert. But uh, it might get changed around because Fred lost his opportunity to play a solo, so we might, he might do a solo uh, at the end of November, and then we might do a duo in December. But anyway, um, we both have Facebook uh, uh, information, so you can find it there. You can go to the church website, and they'll have the concerts. Uh, when it gets close to that time, you'll know exactly what they're about. This last piece is from Spain. A composer, is, his name is Angel Barrios, and it's a, a nostalgic look at uh, flamenco music from a classical Spaniard's point of view. So he was brought up in a, in a tavern, a flam actual flamenco tavern. His father uh, owned a tavern that uh, all the local flamenco artists would come and gather and party and have a great time, and Angel grew up with that. But then he went he went to uh, Northern Europe and studied one of the conservatories and studied, studied traditional uh, uh, real way to composition. He majored in composition. Then he came back to Spain and with that knowledge of composition uh, from the masters, and then he combined his uh, early upbringing with uh, reminiscences of flamenco music, and this is what a uh, result of that is. So you can, you can definitely tell the flavor of flamenco in it. But uh, thanks again for, for coming. We, we appreciate it. Thanks so much.
more? One more? One little one? Okay. This is for uh, Fred and his wife. Thank you so much. Thank you.